Danny's gonna come up with the name off the top of her head right now. Ready? You ready? How to make a knife shiny. <laughs> First, awesome. let me just preface. I talk about being a knife maker, but I'm not really a knife maker. I do bits and pieces, but Steve doesn't think I know what you do. And I know what you do. I just don't like doing it. It's a dirty job. But I'm gonna explain to you how we make our knives shiny and finish them at the end, because that's basically what he's doing. I'll give you the layman's terms, and then Steve will give you the technical. If you're actually interested in what I have to say, then you can hear a little bit more boring parts of what he has to say. He takes a knife for final finishing that has had several coats of oil soak in, dry, cure. To finish it, he takes it in to the grinder and he's got to polish the spine and the choil so that it's comfortable for the person chopping or using the knife. And he'll round it out and it gets nice and soft and like it doesn't hurt like a Mac knife. Sorry, Mac, your knives suck for that. When you're actually chopping, especially if you have a pinch grip like this. So he'll do that. I think you just come in here and take the buffer with all the little frilly compounds that we have. And I've tried the buffer, I don't like it. Be mainly because I work in God's shoes. Like I live in flip flops. If the knife was to get thrown down on my toes, that would be a problem because I don't work in boots. So he'll come over here and he'll shine it and he puts these compounds down that make it really shiny and, okay. That's about what he does to finish. Thank you, how about I show you? Is that better? No, they want you to talk about it. How many steps process is So there? normally in the finishing process, we have the blade up to a certain, the handle up to a certain point. You always work on the handle before you do anything on the blade because this cuts you, this just hits you hard. I'd rather get hit hard than cut. First I do is I buff it and I use different buffing compounds and I use different buffing wheels based on the compound. We used to do three different compounds, but we actually started just hand sanding a little higher. And then we found with this oil, it actually buffs a little better once the oil cures for longer time. So we go to 800 grit and then in between each coat of oil, we actually use a steel wool, triple lot or quad lot steel wool to scuff it up and then re-oil it again. After that, we'll use two different buffing wheels. I actually buy the smaller ones and I wear them down because they actually have a little more torque. The larger the wheel, I mean, we have big ones, really big ones. I can't even, I don't have a big enough motor for this one. I hoped I did, but compensated a little. Um, I don't like mixing my compounds on the wheels. If you think of a compound as a sanding grit, think of this one, which will have the white compound of the week that I've been, or month. I don't, it's Should out of I this just, one. Like, bow out of this? Like, I'm feeling There's, a little awkward. But I only use that on this wheel. This one, which is a very soft wheel, it's actually built. And I use a very light compound, basically a non-scratch removal. So it makes it real shiny and gets the final look I want. Then I go into the grind room, polish everything on the blade. So I'll round the top of the blade here. I'll round the heel, clean up the edge, and I'll bring them all to a 600 grit finish on the belt. Come back out here and I use this wheel, which has a black compound, which is a really rough compound that will start removing the scratches and polishing. And then I finish it on the small wheel with the white to get rid of everything. And that makes it nice and shiny. And then from there we go to the sharpening process. The biggest thing on polishing handles and polishing wood is some materials are porous, some materials are very dense. Porous materials will look dirty. Dense materials will not. Dense materials will look like glass as soon as you polish it. Porous materials will start looking like glass with dirt inside of it. So the big thing is trying to get the right amount of oil to kind of fill all the voids and the gaps. So when you polish it, it looks very shiny and it doesn't look dirty in any ways. It's getting rid of all the little scratches. I clean these all the time using just a belt. If I really need to clean it, I'll soak it in acetone and then do it. But I'll use the belt to kind of pull all the old compound off. So put it on the buffer and then just run the belt and that cleans it off. You want to start seeing it? Sure. <laughs> Super interesting. So I fill up the buffer until it kind of has a nice smooth consistent kind of color to it. I just use the color and then what I do is the big thing is you got to hold real tight on this hand. The buffer will grab and throw everything everywhere. I've ruined knives with that. I've cut my finger in half. I've had it thrown down and stick in my shoe with a sharp point. So I hold it very tight and I gently come in and I kind of get a feel for it. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, the wood itself and I'm trying to get a nice shiny finish on it. 
what I'll do is I'll buff one side so you can kind of see what that looks like, and then we'll go through and buff the other side. You gotta be careful, you wanna keep moving it. If you hold the buff too long at one spot, it can burn or melt the plastic, and that always causes more work. You have to then go back, re-sand it, refinish it. So you can see, if I kind of clean off the buffing compound, the pins are already kind of shiny. They're mirror polished, where this side, they're matte. So I haven't done this side, but I've done this side. And you can see the plastic shines more, the wood's shining more. Um, then I start working, once I do both sides, I'll actually start working on the metal. So let me get this other side done. And that's gonna give a nice kind of shiny mirror polish to it. But you can see as soon as I start hitting it on the blade, the carbon in the steel goes and gets the buffing compound very dirty. I'll fill it up, but then normally I clean it off with the felt. I'll just take the belt. I'm lightly holding it. And what it does is it causes enough heat where it takes the wax off. So it cleans it, so we put more compound and it'll be nice and clean. All right, do one last pass on this, and we'll go to the next compound. Now I'll swap out the buff. Put that on. I always keep my wheels separate. I keep my wheels in one drawer and my compound in the other, and I try to close this as much as possible so that dirt and metal flakes don't actually end up on these buffs and scratch the handles. There's nothing worse than messing up all the work you already did. This one will take it and give the final kind of finish to it. Sometimes there's a little scratches I need a little more aggressive on. Always a little compound left, clean them afterwards, but you can kind of get a better idea. It's basically fully polished, it's gonna give the nice mirror finish to everything. You take this off, take off. Pizza's here, Danny. Then I take off that because now I don't have to worry about cutting myself as much. And so now we can go into the next room. So I bring it into the belt grinder. I have one that I can kind of position wherever I need. And I have this one up here, which helps me kind of overall. I start with a 120 grit. And what I like to do is when I first start to kind of get a rough finish on it or just kind of get the deeper scratches out of the top, I actually use it right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in right here and I'm gonna pull it across, look at it, see if I got all the scratches off and then keep doing that. Then I'll go and I'll break the corners lightly and then I'll actually bring it up here. As I finish this part on the front here, you don't wanna go too fast with the belt. I can control the speed. If you don't, this blade is heat treated. So if I go too fast or I put too much heat in, it could actually ruin the temper. So I'll come in. Kind of see, I still have a couple of scratches here and here. And then I can come in and hit the corner. And now I got that all broken. I can come in here. Make sure I got a nice even. First I break, I keep this part here. And I'll actually go back and forth. Careful that you don't hit the handle. Just around that part, I'll come in here and I'll just lightly do it right here. With a little more control. Do this part. Now this is the, the scariest part because if you hit this corner into the belt, the belt will snap, throw the knife at you and slap you in the head. Don't be dumb and be careful. Come in, kind of work. Go back and forth. I'm being very careful not to overheat this area. And basically I'm trying to round it to where it's gonna feel comfortable in hand. So once I have it rounded. So that first one was 120, this is 320. And I'm looking for consistent scratches so I can still see some of the 120. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually put it at an angle so I can make sure that my previous scratches, which were going straight, are now gone. And I'll come through, finish the top. There I go, that looking good. 
I'll do this side again. Once I'm done with 320 for the 600. And this is why the handmade knives cost so much because that's one knife. I've used three $2 belts already in about five minutes, if that four minutes. And every time, 10 belts or so per knife, I mean roughly, I probably less because I do multiple knives at one time, but I mean, we use a lot of pops and belts. It's pretty much the most expensive part. I'm getting a real nice kind of uniform finish on there that I know when I hit it on the buffer, it's gonna look really good. It's gonna polish out real nicely. And one of the places I look is right in here, the transition. I'm going from a sanded area where I'm sanding this way to this way. And that transition, you can get deep scratches that you won't necessarily know that's there until you get to the buffer. So at the 600 grit, I always kind of take my extra time. I'm being very careful not to hit the handle. I just give it a little extra love and it kind of smooths that all out. Same thing here, the transitional area. Now I got that real nice and polished, and this is all at 600 grit, and it's ready to go back to the buffer. So this is where the buffer really does get dangerous, and it's this is the only time doing this step. Hurt myself on the buffer, thrown knives across the shop. I've shot knives into my boot. I've shot knives into the wall. What I do is I hold very tightly, and I actually come in, and I very carefully go through. And I catch the edges. And one thing you gotta be careful of with the buffer, if I do it up here, it's gonna throw it right into me. As long as I'm basically below the center point, it's gonna throw it down. So if I lose control, it's going down, it's not going into my stomach. Now this is the sketchy part. I like to put my finger underneath or hold it very tightly and you gotta be real careful. If you come in and this tip catches, I mean, I can hold it as strong as I want, but it's spinning around at 3,600 3, RPM. It's gonna try to chuck it from me. So you gotta come in very carefully, hit it, and then at the tip, let off, and just kind of barely touch the tip. And I come in on this side, I do the same thing. And what's cool, once you do that, you can see it's a full mirror polish at that point. Then I come over here and I finish it out. Buffing compound on it, so we actually clean it with acetone before we're done. If you look, it's a real nice, you can see it's polished all the way up from the handle to the blade, all the way around here and then up and it's all rounded. So you have no hot spots. Everything feels really good in hand. I've gotten pretty comfortable at doing this to where I don't have to check all the time. But one of the biggest things that I always say doing, and I do this when I'm shaping handles and when I'm doing anything that's gonna basically involve the knife being in hand because I hold it and I hold it a bunch of different ways and I make sure there's no rough spots or hot spots or anything that's kind of biting me. And really it's what kind of finishes off a knife. It makes it feel good in hand, kind of gives a nice aesthetic to it. We didn't go this in depth on the polish when we first started, about a year ago, we started doing this more and more. It's a little more intense process to do. But yeah, that's how we make a knife go from sanded to polished, or as Danny says, shiny, pretty. Hopefully that explains it, kind of what Danny said.